Hello everybody. Whatever time of day it is that you're joining me, I hope this finds all well with you. Please take a moment to reflect with me as I join you from one of my favorite places in our home, our back porch. Uh, this is where Judy and I share our morning coffee and talk about things important and things mundane. Where we formulate life plans and enjoy the birds at the feeder and in our trees, sometimes just sit and relax. As a prayer, I would ask, grant God that we seek that the time we spend here together might be pleasant, thoughtful, and helpful. Amen. <clears throat> the scripture I chose from today's lectionary choices is from the Psalms, uh, the 78th chapter, verses 17 through 29. If you wish, please join me as we read from the New International Version of that passage. They continued to sin against him, rebelling in the wilderness against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock and water gushed out. Streams flowed abundantly. But can he also give us bread? Can he supply meat for his people? When the Lord heard them, he was furious. His fire broke out against Jacob and his wrath rose against Israel. For they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. Yet he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna. <clears throat> he rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. He let loose the east wind from the heavens, and by his power made the south wind blow. He rained down meat on them like dust, and birds like sand on the seashore. He made them come down inside their camp, all around their tents. They ate till they were gorged. He had given them what they craved. The psalmist here addresses both remembrance and forgetfulness as they play out for better or worse in our lives. Earlier in the chapter, his readers, yes, that would be us too, are admonished to recall God's deeds, his commandments, and his promises, and to teach them to their and to our descendants, and to remember them. However, uh, things seem to have gotten just a bit tough out there in the wilderness, and yeah, the people forgot the good. They became resentful of the difficulties they faced. They became fearful. They began to distrust. They began to look to other gods. They wanted a solution, and they wanted it now. Let's look again at verses 19 and 20. The people asked, can God really take care of us? And did they remember? They spoke against God. They said, can God really spread a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock, and water gushed out, and streams flowed abundantly. But can he also give us bread? Can he supply meat for the people? As if to say, yeah, okay, that's true. Yeah, I know, he struck the rock and, you know, the water gushed out and, yeah, streams flowed abundantly. And that was, hey, you know, that was all well and good. But, hey, guys, that was then. This is now. And you know what? We're hungry. So where's the food? Can he give us bread? I mean, you know, water's okay, but how about some meat? Can he supply meat? You know, where's the beef? But then in verse 21, the real trouble starts. What does the psalmist say? God was furious. Whoa. Trust me, you don't want to make God furious. His fire broke out against Jacob. Reading this passage, I was in mind of a parent who has absolutely had it with an obstinate child. She is 
furious. He is hot. There's big trouble in River City. But then, like a loving parent, the anger cooled and love prevailed. So again, looking to check to verse 23, yet, or we might say, notwithstanding, or despite, or nevertheless, or even though they griped and grumbled and complained, he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Yes, God responded. The doors of heaven opened and manna rained down. Not quite sure what manna was, but it uh, must have been good stuff. The grain of heaven was granted. Humans tasted the bread of angels. That sounds good, doesn't it? Must have been cinnamon bread. Meat rained down like dust. Birds, game birds, I would presume, were provided in numbers approximating the sands of the seashore. And the people ate until they were gorged. They were given what they craved. So, what does the story mean? Well, I'm sure that many lessons can be gleaned here, but I would suggest that the psalmist was encouraging, reminding, perhaps exhorting, that always remembering the good, be it in our relationship with God or with our fellows, is an essential component of keeping things in perspective. And it's not that the bad is bad. It's not that pain isn't pain. It's not that we don't at times question. It's not that we don't ask, why? It's not even that anger is sometimes a real, perhaps even on occasion, a necessary part of our response, especially to bad things. But it is to remind us that remembering the good can hold despair at bay. It can prevent undue negativity from distorting our perspective. It can preserve relationships. And it might even preserve a bit of sanity. I know we've all been told at one time or another by someone, in my case it was my mom, this too shall pass, Bradley. And so it will. No matter how bad, the pain will subside. The sun will shine again. Laughter will not desert us forever. And joy will return. So remember the good and be thankful for it. God bless you, my friends, each and every one. Thanks be to God. Amen.